Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. Um, I am welcoming back two of my favorite guests, authors, nice people, and very, very intellectual uh, writers. This is Roy Newberger. Welcome to the show. His wife, Linda, also known as Leah. Leah, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And uh, so glad you could be with us. Last time you were on the show, we talked about your second book, uh, World Storm, and uh, a great book, and uh, a follow-up to your first book, for those of you who are scholars and can read, From Central Park to Sinai. And uh, you uh, have another book. But I want to uh, talk a little bit about... Uh, Roy Newberger, um, you were educated at the Ethical Cultural Schools, and you met your wife there, and you were married after your sophomore year at the University of Michigan. Um, you both graduated with honors in English language and literature, and after your master's degree, you continued your English studies, is it Balliol? Balliol. Balliol College, and that's in England, right? Oxford? Oxford, England. Oxford. And uh, your wife yeah. studied also there. Where were you at? I was in art school there. You were in art school there. So uh, then you uh, ended up back in Chicago. You were working uh, for the uh, city of New York, right? Right. Where I worked, I was the director of conservation for, the, for New York City. Wild. Wild. So somehow or another... Very wild. You guys, <laughs> you guys were not religious and far from it. In, in, in your early marriage, in your early courtship. And somehow or another, you came back and, and found Yiddishkeit and found your roots and changed your whole lives and lifestyles around. And that's really the theme of From Central Park to Sinai. That is correct. Um, you talking about what was going on in the world at the time that World Storm came out, which was what year was that? That was... Um, two, 2003. 2003. Right. So about three years later. Right. About three years later. Now, both of these books, From Central Park to Sign World Farm, are really based on your uh, opinions, your studies, and the things that you learned in your own experiences, based uh, on a contrast to what was going on in the world and around you. Okay. You've got a new book out which is so different. <laughs> this is um, 2020, and uh, 2020 is a book, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's fiction, yet it's reality. You know what my wife says? Tell me. My wife says it's factual, it's true. Nonfiction. Nonfiction. It just didn't happen yet. It just <laughs> didn't happen yet. I, I like that. I like that. Um, we, we should explain, Doug, that this is the Hebrew version. Right, this is the, the Hebrew version. The English version has yet to come out. Coming out very soon. Correct. Come out very soon. And It'll and be called 2020 Vision. Vision, 2020 Vision. And I was going to actually mention that myself because I'm aware. Um, 2020 Vision. It's a great title because when you read the book, which, which I've had the privilege to do, um, it, it, it really opens your eyes. 2020 vision. It opens your eyes because it's very easy to have your eyes open and not see what's going oh, on around you. And that's, that's, for that's sure. kind of the message of the book. Tell me a little bit on, you know, you go around and lecture a lot of places, a lot of Kiruv, as we say, a lot of, a lot of places where people are also uh, studying Judaism who haven't had a strong background in studies as younger people, kind of where you came from. Right. And a lot of people learn a lot from you and your experiences. What brought you to say, I want to go another direction with my writing? There was one very practical reason, and that is that 
some, a lot of people love this, my second book, World Storm. However, World Storm is, is really, you used the word intellectual before, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's analytical. And I, I found out that people love stories. People really like stories. People also have very little time to think in our world. And uh, so a story is, is easier to digest. So I wanted to write a story, and I wanted to write a story about a theme that's really on people's minds, something that's important to them. And that was really the genesis of 2020 Vision. Now tell me something. You, you refer to yourselves speaking to each other in this book as, as husband and wife, as friends, and, and do you put yourself in the place of these characters in the book? And we'll talk more about what the book is about, but do you put yourself in these places, or do you just use your own names? I, you know, when I write, <laughs> I really like to do it personally. I like to put myself into the book. I mean, From Central Park to Sinai is really about us. I put, yes, I put myself, I put ourselves, I imagine ourselves in this situation, the situations that are described in the book, A 2020 Vision, for sure. 2020 Vision could be a movie. <clears throat> 2020 Vision could be a movie. It sure could. And it probably, it, it probably would um, be very entertaining and also very scary. We're working on it. We're really? working on a movie. I, I, I believe the book could be a movie. Let's talk about 2020 Vision for a minute now in depth. 2020 Vision is, is a world where peace is reigning supreme. All the, things turned around from, from 2007, from 2008, as it will be. Uh, things turned around. And from, from the past year, from the, the coming year, change has taken place. All of a sudden, uh, people have changed their attitudes, it seems. Uh, people have have looked in a different direction. Uh, uh, unity, achdus, as we call it in, in Hebrew and in Yiddish, uh, achdut has has started to reign supreme in the world. <clears throat> Tell me what what is going on when that all happens in the book, because it's a shocker. <laughs> Without giving away the whole book, of course. We don't want to give away the whole book. It is an exciting book. Look, we're living right now in a world full of ferment. There is a tremendous amount of conflict in today's world. It's a scary world. Uh, the world imagined in 2020 vision, and by the way, I think we should say the 2020 vision is a pun because it's not only meant to imply clear vision, but, the year. but also the year 2020. That's the year the book takes place. So apparently Excuse we're... Excuse me, is the third meaning also that I can say this because I'm the one who sort of the title, so I had in mind three things. Also that it is a vision of the future. It's visionary in that sense. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So apparently at that time people have made an effort to uh, make the world a more peaceful place because they realize that there are very big problems in the world and uh, if, if they don't solve them, then it's going to be very bad. But out of this, apparently, um, uh, a world that seems to be progressing uh, toward uh, an attempt anyway, peaceful solutions to a lot of problems... Uh, really a very explosive situation and what's develops very, very quickly. What's interesting is that in, in your perspective of this peaceful coexistence in the world and everything, there's no more terror attacks. There's no more, you know, individuals who are coming out and saying, I'm going to get a group of people together and, and change this peaceful world because I think we should change. And do it. It, it, It's all silent and quiet. It's, it's like it's really serene 
as, as you would say in the world, in the book. And it's, it's what we'd call, I guess, a euphoria, something that everybody would wish for to be a, a messianic era without a messiah. Yeah, but that's all uh, apparent. It's not, not real. Look, in the years before 9-11, um, nobody expected that attack to take place. And that's really what's going on in the year 2020. People are not expecting a cataclysmic attack to take place. And there is a certain, as you say, a euphoria, maybe an attempt to um, uh, close one's eyes to what's really beneath the surface. But the conflict has not been resolved, and it you know, breaks out very suddenly. Leah, you edit these books. You're, you're the English uh, scholar editor. <laughs> when, when you go these, through these books and edit them, do you find that you just want to change something that Roy wrote uh, to make it uh, either uh, more attractive to the reader or more decisive from what the real plot is going on? You know, or, or, or are you really just editing? Because I know you do go through these very deep, very intensely, deeply, and I know the title is your title. Yes, I'll tell you how we work. My husband, usually with each book, gets up very early in the morning to write. He gets up at 4 in the morning, every morning for about a year, and he writes till 7.30 in the morning when he goes to the synagogue. To Daven. To Daven. So, he puts it on my desk every morning, what he wrote, and then I read it, and I mark it up, and I make suggestions, and I, and I, you know, say exactly what I think. This, you know, this is good. This should be changed. But I don't make any major changes in the plot. I don't. I'm not such a idea, you know, big idea type of editor. I'm more uh, looking for, you know, grammatical errors or, or, um, you know, maybe this sentence is a little awkwardly phrased or, you know, something like that. Uh-huh. More like a, an English teacher, I guess. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's good. Now, do the, do the two of you, obviously, you said, I've got this idea. I've got this idea for a new book. You know, it's not like the other books. I'm not going to tell about me and what's happening to me and what's happening to the world around me. I'm going to tell what I think is going on in, in my mind and, and what should be or, or, or might be. So do you sit there and say... You know, stay up until four in the morning, chatting in the bedroom, going, "Listen to this, listen to this, Leah." <laughs> how does it come about, and and how do you really bring it into reality uh, before you sit down and, and put it into words? First, I get an idea, and I don't really talk about it, and I mull it over in my head, and you know, sometimes you go to sleep at night, you wake up in the morning with insights you didn't have the night before. And I let it gel and work out a general plot. And then I don't talk about it beforehand. I write it. Then after I write each segment, then Leia looks at it. So she doesn't know the end before you get to it? (laughs) No, she doesn't know the end. It's so interesting. Sometimes it's interesting. It's true in this book. I was so anxious. I was. I knew the end at the beginning. You know, I had to go from there to, sure. to there. But I knew what the end was going to be like, and I was so anxious to tell her about it. Actually, what I did was this is actually I forgot about this. I wrote you know the first few chapters, and, and then I the skipped end. all the way to the end. I wrote the end, and then I went back and I filled in the middle because I knew I had this great idea. And the ending, I will say. I mean, I think, you know, with God's help, it's really an unbelievable ending. And um, we're not going to tell what it is no. here. <laughs> but um, it, it, but I, I, I did, I had it in mind, and then I just filled in the middle. But I want to tell you also, it's interesting, since you're asking these very interesting questions, which nobody else asks, by the way, good for you. Uh, I want all your viewers to know that, Rabbi Doug asks questions nobody else asks. So, this book has been, I finished it really two years ago or more. And I've been trying to get it published since then. The whole process of getting it published, um, nothing is really simple in life. This isn't simple either. But that 
po that process of going to various people, looking for agents, and going to potential publishers, and so on, through that process, this book was changed time and time and time again. It, it, the final version is something like the eighth major revision. It's a different book from what it was two years ago. So even though this process of trying to find who is the, who's going to publish it and so on, and thank God we do have a publisher now. Feldheim is, is publishing it, and we're very ha happy about that. Um, through each of the, through the whole process, the book was changed and improved, and it's really, as I say, a very different book than it was when I thought I finished it the first time. Uh -huh. Very, very interesting. Um, we're here on tape with Rabbi Doug, and I am here with Roy and Leah Newberger, and uh, this is the new book, 2020 Vision, and uh, we're going to be right back, so stay with us here on tape with Rabbi Doug. I am American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am America. I'm an American. I am American. I am an American. Stay tuned. Taped with Rabbi Doug will be right back. Nobody likes me. Nobody. Maybe it's because I like to attack people. Men, women, kids. I can reduce them to weak, stammering, confused, scared imitations of their former selves. If they don't stop me, I just might leave them that way for life. I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke and act quickly. Time lost is brain lost. I'm Arthur Ruth Gruber, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. Welcome back to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Uh, we are here with Roy and Leah Neuberger. Roy is the author of his new book, 2020, to follow up from Central Park to Sinai and World Storm, his first two books. And I'm very privileged to have you on each time you've had a book. And the reason I don't have every author on every time they have a book, but the reason that I wanted to have you back on and the reason I want to have you on after your books is because not only are your books very readable and enjoyable and informative and enthralling, uh, finding out about you and now this new uh, way of writing in, in your <laughs> new book, but... Uh, you are an amazing speaker. You travel around the world. You, you lecture. You're a scholar-in-residence type person who goes to different synagogues, different Jewish organizations, different uh, cities, different countries, and speaks to people about uh, you, about you, about the two of you. You go together as a team, and you talk about your lives and the way that you went from being secular Jews to religious Jews, and not just that, and, and the religious I don't think is the key part of it, that's who you are, but the key part of it is how you found out what your roots were that you were missing. You found something that was missing, and, and you have this wonderful way of speaking to people and bringing people uh, in with you. You don't just talk about your books. Um, do you have a new lecture that goes with this book, or are you still going around with your kiru, with your speaking to people about, about Jewish life and and, and and encouraging them to find out more about their roots more than you are about what you're writing about? We have several lectures. I mean, it's amazing, really. We have, thank God, it's a real privilege, spoken in literally hundreds of locations in quite a few countries now. And um, we have a variety of things we speak about. Maybe you could say the basic lecture for a place where we haven't been before is the, is the one you mentioned, our lives, because it's really not about us. It's about the process. I think today people are looking for God. People are looking for stability in a world that's very frightening. So we tell our story. And we, you know, when you preach, meaning when you tell somebody how he or she should live, it's really a big turnoff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want, as you say, we want to just talk to people. And we tell them our story. And everybody likes a story. 
And people find themselves, they fit themselves into that process, into that story. And that's, they enjoy it. Uh, we speak, we're speaking now in a lot of college campuses. And it is so exciting. And these kids are so, they love it. They love to hear it because they are looking for a life that they can believe in. They're in on the world. edge of, of, of leaving school and having to be responsible for themselves and not being, sure. you know, not relying on their parents. So th that's like the, the proper time to say, you know, whose who's model am I going to follow? Exactly. This is a turning point in their lives. We also do, now you see, but say the s subject of World Storm and the subject of the new book, 2020 Vision, fits into that also because we're just recently speaking at the University of Illinois. And we told our story first, and then the kids wanted more. Mm -hmm. And so I, I spoke about 2020 Vision. And, but it fits into that theme because there's also a question, you know, we're living in this scary world with, with, with you know, what's it all mean? The conflicts, the, the, uh, and there's a huge amount of anti-Semitism now. But then also there are, what about climactic changes, you know, global warming and everything that implies. There are things that are going on in the world that seem like very frightening you know, how do I fit into this? And the scenario of 2020 vision is really that. And, I, and, I, and one thing I have found out is that uh, our Jewish tradition, our prophetic tradition, our, uh, the, the Talmud, our rabbinical tradition tells us what it's going to be like in these days that people, for many people think, or what we call the end of history, the days before the coming of the Messiah, of Mashiach. And, and if people know that the changes they see going, around, uh, going on around them in the world or, or have been predicted by the, in the books of prophecy that everyone's so familiar with, then it gives people a sense of greater security. They can deal with it. Maybe there's a way to get through this. Maybe I don't have to be afraid. Maybe I can have a sense of security and stability in a world that seems insecure and unstable. You know, it's interesting that you bring all that up. There's, there's that feeling of instability in, in a global sense, in a local sense. I mean, just simple things like the laws that change around you every day, for example, uh, I'll just give you examples. Everything becomes stricter as time goes on. Now, uh, certainly when I was a little boy, there was no law that said you had to wear a seatbelt or you are going to get a ticket. Uh, there was no, no such law that you couldn't talk on a cell phone. There was no such thing as cell phones while you're driving in the car. You know, things, they come up with all these little laws, you know, you can't walk your dog on a certain sidewalk because, because, uh, you know, there's cafes near there, and, and it's against... Whatever those things are, that, that they, everything becomes stricter and stricter and stricter. So you wonder, where does it end? Where does it end? Does it end uh, with, with uh, uh, military law coming down on all of us? Uh, what's going on now in, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, and, and what's going on in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, it, it currently... You know, where, where does it all end? Is it going to come down to us here? Uh, and, and I think that that's kind of sort of the message that I got out of 2020. Let me tell you what my, my final thought is about 2020. My final thought is, it's like, never turn your back, never close your eyes because you're going to get stabbed in the back if you do. Is that, is that the message you're trying to send people, to just, just, to just watch out in every direction, everywhere you go, under every circumstance? What is your... What is your uh, uh, your message that you're going to leave with people because obviously you wrote this and the story is amazing. The story is amazing and it's going to capture anybody who reads it. But what's the message that they're going to walk away with besides enjoying the movie <laughs> as they read the book? I hope so. Uh, yeah. uh, I think the message is that people should know in the midst of ferment that yes, what you say is true. 
one should be very well, very much aware of what's going on around them in the world. But, for example, when you see buildings collapse, look what happened in 9-11. In, 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 in a matter of hours, these gigantic structures that were two of the greatest buildings in the world disappeared within a matter of hours. Does that mean that a, one has to crumble the way those buildings crumbled? The point is, there's something to hang on to. That there is, that, that one, if, if one finds a way to connect with biblical tradition, with one's, uh, with, um, with God, that one can get through life with stability, with even an attempt at mental serenity, with a knowledge that in the end everything is going to come out all right, which it is. Gamzu Latova. Gamzu Latova. Leah, let me ask you a question. Do you think that between the two of you, because you're a team, you work together, do you think you would be where you are today without him or he would be where he is today without you? Do you <laughs> I, I'm very serious because, you know, part of having faith or part of, you know, like you say, uh, thinking Gamzu Latova, everything is going to be okay is because you have support somewhere. Has that support helped the two of you come to that Gamzu Latova that I believe that everything's going to be okay in the big picture? Definitely. You know, it's a long story that began, I just had just turned 15, my husband was 16 when we met in high school, and we always felt something was missing in life, there was an emptiness inside that there has to be more than just materialism and trying to be a good person, and how do you know what's right and how what's, you know what's wrong in this world where everything seems to be relative, and when we found our Torah and our roots and, and that there is eternal there are eternal values and eternal truth to live by, then we together grew and continue to grow. And it's hard to imagine one of us without the other one. I mean, since we're 15 and 16, we've been growing and searching and learning together. That's thank great. God. And That's thank great. God we both felt the same way when we finally found our own it's great. And it's great, and I think that we're fortunate people. when you're going around and speaking, I think that's the message that everybody should get, that they, as, as Jews that you're speaking to who are find, trying to find Judaism, part of that is finding the Jewish community and, and the support of the Jewish community as you two support each other. I want to thank you both so much for being on the show. I wish you much success with your new book, thank you. 2020 Vision. Roy and Leah Neuberger. All the best. Hope to see you again so soon. Remember, check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also catch our show online. And if you want to email me or email uh, Roy or Leah, you can do so at info at tvrabbi.com, and I'll get that off to them. Thanks for being with us. Hope to see you all next time, same time, same place, right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom. And I'm talking about Rabbi Doug. Talking about Rabbi Doug. Talk about Rabbi Doug on your TV show. Well, he's the rabbi for me. Anytime you need, you're gonna get married or you're gonna die. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug. Gonna see Rabbi Doug on the TV tonight. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug presentation.